um, at the end of tonight, we're going to do a little informal speed dating between uh, change-making people like Emer and some of the brand experts that might be in this room. And Emer and her team, uh, the two partners, um, will be on that speed dating session. So if you're a designer or a strategist or a filmmaker or a writer, um, be sure to sign up for that speed dating event. Um, our third speaker is Arjen Klinkenberg, also known as Klink. Um, he is the brand manager of Tony's Chocolonely, um, which doesn't need an introduction in the Netherlands. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the very, very, very first, uh, I guess, the birth of, of this brand um, on the uh, Kuringsdienst van Waarde. Um, but I remember seeing that episode and being really impressed. And then I worked for an agency called Lava, and Arjen was working next door. And he designed the first wrapper. And that wrapper is still much the same today. But Arjen has kind of traveled with the brand and is now their branding guru in-house. So it's really, really nice to have him here. Give him a warm round of applause. Arjen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anna. I'm very uh, proud uh, to be uh, in the book uh, and to be here tonight. Um, uh, like you said, um, I work for Tony's, which you can obviously see. Uh, at Tony's, we have uh, creative job titles, uh, and so I saved the coolest one for myself, <laughs> Mr. T. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm actually not the brand manager as such. Um, actually, we have a marketing team, and everybody has a say about the brand. Um, my official title in my contract is creative guru, so it can be multi-interpretable. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the design choices that we've made along the way. Uh, but first, I'm going to give you a small uh, masterclass on cocoa, uh, because that is what it's all about. Um, cocoa uh, grows around the equator, comes from uh, South America originally, and was transported uh, to uh, uh, Africa, uh, for example, uh, and n is now grown. 60% uh, of all cocoa in the world comes from, uh, I'll stand over here for, so everyone can see it, uh, comes from uh, Ghana and the Ivory Coast. So that's a lot. Um, there's about two and a half million farmers, cocoa farmers, who produce this. And it is not like uh, these are farmers as we know them uh, in Western Europe. Uh, these are small farmers with a small bit of uh, woodland uh, in which they uh, grow cocoa, amongst other things. Um, often quite poor. Uh, and, uh, well, it, it, helps, it doesn't help that worldwide there's about five and a half million uh, cocoa farmers. Uh, so that's South America and uh, Western Africa and Indonesia, and, uh, amongst others. There's only 10 brands, 10 multinationals, who control the flow of cocoa uh, to the billions of consumers. These are brands like Ferrero, Mars, uh, Baricalabla, Nestlé. Uh, so you can imagine that if these 10 multinationals sit in a room together, they control uh, the flow of cocoa of all these farmers. Uh, it, it's, it's very easy to, uh, to keep control on uh, who gets what uh, and who doesn't. Um, so it's very uh, uh, acceptable to uh, corruption, amongst other things. Um, estimated about 2.3 uh, million children in Ghana and Ivory Coast who work on cocoa plantations. Now, this is not all child labor. We define a difference between child labor and child work. Uh, child labor, uh, child work being uh, you help your, uh, your parents on the farm in the weekends or uh, after school. Child labor being you can't go to school, you have to work. Uh, you're denied an education, uh, no, not much food or drink or water. Um, and 90% of these children, at least, work on, under illegal and very uh, dangerous circumstances, um, which is uh, internationally recognized circumstances, uh, like uh, heavy lifting, working with machetes about this size, very sharp. Um, and the, uh, there's an estimated 90,000 children and adults uh, who are victim of human trafficking from 
country to country or within a country, um, and they uh, are working under these circumstances. That's uh, that's that's horrible. Je suis comme Samé Félix, j'ai 16 ans. J'ai travaillé dans une plantation de cacao de 1999 en 2003. Je m'appelle Kam Koye Herman, j'ai 18 ans. J'ai travaillé à la plantation de cacao de 1999 en 2003. Je m'appelle Kam Touré, j'ai 18 ans. J'étais travaillé dans la plantation en 1999. Je n'étais pas payé, j'étais forcé de travailler. J'étais forcé de travailler. Je n'avais pas la liberté pour quitter les coins. On ne m'a pas payé. On m'a forgé de travailler. Et puis on ne vous laisse jamais causer entre parents. Si on te voit causer avec ton parent, bon, on te tue ou bien tu, tu, on te mate très bien là et puis on te fait changer de coin. C'est fini, madame Small clip of what's, what, I'm, what I'm going to tell about later. Um, these 10 multinationals, they know this. They know what's going on. Um, in 2001, uh, two uh, American governors um, set up a protocol, Harking and Engel, um, uh, which was, uh, in which they um, uh, said that by 2005, the worst forms of child labor in cocoa should be abol uh, uh, abolished. Um, and all the 10 multinationals signed it. Nestle signed it, Mars signed it, Ferrero signed it. But lo and behold, uh, in 2002, 2005, nothing happened. Um, the, uh, like Anna mentioned, the, the journalistic uh, show, Kuringsnit van Waarde, uh, they spotted this. They found out about this story. Uh, and Tony van der Keuken, uh, here on the right, um, said, uh, uh, who was the face of this, of this item in this show, um, said, uh, we have to sue them. We have to sue them because they don't hold themselves to their principles and what they, what they signed for. But small company, uh, three journalists uh, against multinationals that big wouldn't work. So they turned it around. He said, if I eat chocolate and I know it's produced, uh, from uh, by child labor or by human trafficking, uh, and I know this and I still eat it, then I'm also responsible for it. So he, uh, in, in, uh, with witnesses, he ate 12 uh, chocolate bars, which is quite a feat, um, and uh, sued himself. So he went to the, to the judge and he said, I know what's going on and I, I'm, I'm, I still eat it, and so you have to put me in jail. Uh, this is uh, uh, Herman, who you saw in the video as well. He was one of the witnesses and he testified against uh, Tone. Um, it didn't work, alas, that would be very good, but it, it didn't really work, but it got attention. And uh, the judge did recognize uh, the necessity of uh, uh, telling this story. Um, and uh, in a sort of public stunt, publicity stunt, they said, you know what, we're going to do it ourselves. Uh, let's show the world that you can buy, uh, you can make and produce a bar of chocolate uh, without exploiting other people. Uh, and let's call it Tony's Chocolonely. Uh, a very horrible name, of course. Uh, too long, uh, a lot of O's and L's and things going on. Um, I was working at a, a small company called DEF, uh, which was a, six, it's a sister company of Lava, and we said, that's a good initiative. Will, we saw the program. Let's, let's, uh, uh, let's make a, a, a wrapper for them. Um, and I always think that uh, with a name like this, very hard name to pronounce and to remember, uh, but the problem in the, in, the, uh, in the design is usually also the solution. So um, what we did was we created a wrapper uh, in which, which only tells and which only uh, presents the name. Uh, made it by hand, uh, so all the letters are hand cut, uh, because we thought in the wrapper, the wrapper should be uh, everything that other wrappers aren't. Um, so other wrappers have uh, uh, like slick letter lettering, so we cut the letters by hand. Um, first color you associate with chocolate is brown, very well, uh, so we don't use brown. Um, <laughs> 
we're going to make it from uncoated paper, which was quite new at the time. Well, all the, all the other brands had coated paper. Uh, we don't have any pictures of cocoa or chocolate on it because all the, all the other brands do. What we wanted to do, the, 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 the chocolate bar, is to sort of nudge all the other chocolate bars off the shelf um, and uh, to be everything that the other bar isn't. Because uh, in the end, um, the only uh, thing that you, you have to tell your story is that chocolate bar in the supermarket. So it should be good. And in that way, we wanted to use everything that the chocolate bar has. So uh, while other chocolate bars, especially at the time, were shared equally, equally, equally uh, ours is shared unequally. Um, so in that way, the chocolate bar, by sharing it and by dividing it, you get a bigger piece than I do. But that's exactly what it does what, what happens and what happens in the cocoa industry. Um, and we also put little jokes in it, and this is for you especially, uh, that the uh, cocoa producing countries uh, are fitted in the bar as well. Uh, and the, the, the bottom of the bar is the equator. Uh, so we started off with, uh, with milk chocolate. Um, uh, it was a sort of a publicity stunt, but it worked really well, which was quite a surprise. Um, so then we, we were a brand. Um, and then a year later, we thought, well, you know, um, one thing that we did also was that it's in Holland, it's quite common to have a code for uh, chocolate. So uh, red is usually a code for uh, dark chocolate, whereas blue is usually the code for milk chocolate. But we wanted people to, uh, to think about what they get, what you take from the shelf. Um, we still get emails or, uh, or t phone calls, uh, even, even now, of people saying, you know, I wanted to buy dark chocolate and I ended up with milk chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we send you a bar to make up for it, but read, think, read, read what you get. Um, so uh, uh, we were in a bit of a pickle when we said, you know, after a year or so, we wanted to do dark chocolate. Well, you know, okay, uh, let's make it blue then, okay. Um, and then, um, even a year later, we said, Okay, now we have these two, but what if we want another, another flavor? Okay, well, let's, let's do hazelnut. Um, okay, and we sort of made it like this. And the, what I think is, is quite unique about Tony's is that um, the brand, the idea, uh, is just, it sort of appeared. Uh, three journalists who had this idea, uh, a designer who doesn't have any, didn't have any experience with packaging design, um, made it in 10 minutes, uh, about just 10 minutes before the people of Gurenstein's Provider came to our studio. Uh, and also the logic behind these bars, we sort of made up afterwards. Um, so in our style guide, th there is an explanation, but we thought about it like, like afterwards. So I'll try and explain it to you. Um, this is a caramel sea salt. It's the best-selling chocolate bar in the Netherlands, by the way. Um, we wanted milk chocolate to have sort of a, a warm feeling, so the red from the original wrapper is in the lettuce, and then the background color is cho chosen by association, and caramel is, I think, orangey. We have a yellow tasting ribbon, and then we have a new flavor here, which is the dark milk, oh, sorry, uh, which is blue but has red letters, and, well, if you're still with us, then you get the point. It's all done a bit by association. Um, so, if we have a, a dark bar, it has red lettering, and a few years ago we started off with white, and then, of course, you get white lettering. Yeah. Yeah, that's white, so the background color comes back in the letters. So, you see, there's a system that's well thought about, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, you get it. Um, just try them all. Um, the bar is our hero, but when we started off, we wanted to, of course, communicate also about you know, other stuff um, uh, at a certain moment. Um, and the, the, the hand-cut style is something that we used a lot, um, but it, we couldn't really fit everything in it. And then at a certain moment, um, uh, I needed to do an advertisement, and I thought it was for the hazelnut. It looked like that, with a, a sort of light green color, which was horrible. Um, and I thought, you know, it would be cool if the bar would be, like, have feet and would be in falling in love with a, a hazelnut and they're having a little baby. Um, <laughs> and then we really liked it, so we used that. So now the, the bars on feet, as we call them, uh, they, are, uh, they, they come back a lot in our, uh, in our communication. Um, 
And the, the danger was, in, in the beginning, we really liked them. We wanted to we put them in everything, and they become like the, like the M&M's uh, characters. Um, and then we thought, that doesn't really work because we're not M&M's, so we have to do it differently. And now they're more like uh, the, you know, the two guys from The Muppet Show were on the balcony, uh, Waldor, uh, Waldorf and Stadler. So they're kind of cynical in a way, and they're kind of funny, and they always make remarks. So they sort of uh, embody uh, one of our core well values, which is critical. Um, so in that way, we also, you know, it's it's the 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 style is transgressing. Um, because it can be too, this can, if, if you would have only these, it would be too crazy. And we are crazy, we are crazy about chocolate, but we're also very serious about people. And something to, um, uh, to ensure that these two sides of our story, of our chocolate, uh, are, uh, are, are in everything that we do, we do have marketing beliefs that we uh, convey. Um, and I will I'll run you through them quickly. Uh, our mission is our one and only objective. So our mission for slave-free chocolate. All the rest is a means to that end. Our core values, outspoken, entrepreneurial, willful, and makes you smile, are leading in everything to do, every choice that we make. We don't use paid traditional media, so we don't have any billboards, we don't have any commercials, because we think that by handing a chocolate bar to someone and telling the story is much more powerful than whizzing by in a car uh, next to a billboard. We create pull instead of push, um, we inspire and activate Choco fans to join us, and we're always open and honest about the good things, but also about the not-so-pretty things. And to give an example, this is um, an example of how our mission is our only objective. At a certain moment, we discovered that the inside of a wrapper was also printable. You know, we never knew. So we put on our recipe for slave-free chocolate, and we asked people to share it with the big chocolate companies and the politics, and one of our very enthusiastic Choco fans did it and shared it with Tag Nestle, and um, it worked. Nestle came round and to talk about how we work with chocolate, uh, and now we have a conversation, we have a small line with Nestle to talk about things that we do. So thanks to that fan. Um, uh, our core values, uh, one of the core values, one of my favorite ones, and I know one of the favorite ones of my colleagues here as well, is that, that our core values, uh, are one of our, them is uh, makes you smile, Tony makes you smile, so we are very, Serious, but we also have fun doing it. And if we introduce a bar, like this was the, uh, the popcorn disco dip bar, we had a little disco party, so we rented some roller skates and we boomed some disco at our office and we had a little party uh, because we think it's important to work in an environment which is the same fun as the chocolate bar. Um, we believe in direct relationships, so every year we, when we present our annual report, annual fair report, not year report, we have a, a, a Tony's Fair, and where we invite our colleagues and uh, cocoa farmers, and also uh, a couple of thousand of our closest friends, to have a small party, um, and to talk to one another and to uh, to interact, um, which is uh, which is very nice. Uh, we create pool instead of push. We have a, an office on uh, Westergastrein here, and. Um, the postman would always come by and we were given a bar and then people would, buy, would come by and say, you know, can I buy chocolate? And we said, no, but you can have one. Okay, thanks. Um, but then we thought, you know, what if we have a little, um, a little store? So here's you, Maartje, trying to, uh, to sell them some chocolate. Um, and it's very strange, but people came. It was very busy. Uh, so now we have a, a, an even bigger store, but people came from all around uh, the Netherlands and even a lot of tourists. Um, so we believe that if you are yourself uh, and you do what you want to do, people will come to you who believe in you, instead of trying to, you know, barf out your message. Uh, and we are very open and honest, and this is something uh, that's nice for the Dutch people, uh, but I'll translate it. Uh, Jesse found something in a chocolate that looked like a toenail. Um, wasn't really sure, so she sent it to us, we sent her a couple of bars back, and then in the meantime she thought it would be nice to post it on Linda News, um, which was a big item. Uh, and, but it's, it's, uh, we invited her to come to the factory and to come to our office uh, to show how chocolate is made because it's a natu natural product. Um, but we communicate this because we think it's important to, to tell and to tell people about it and to ask them what they think. And it's all about attention. It's attention to your customers, to your fans, 
But for me, as a designer, it's also very important that you take your, uh, your, your fans seriously in your design. And to make something which is only Tony's, uh, to have it fit our core values, uh, and to, uh, to, to have something which differentiates, differentiates itself. Uh, and in our design team, with me and Valerie, who is in the audience as well, we always uh, use the purple cow check. So uh, if we make something, and you could put a purple cow next to it from Milka, it's not Tony's, and we won't do it. Or we won't do it in that way. <laughs> so we have uh, three journalists who, on a publicity stunt, made this bar, designer who doesn't know how to design packaging, and you, get a, you end up with this bar, which people really like, which is amazing. Um, but that's the key, because, you know, we don't know, but you know, so it's only together that we can make chocolate 100% slavery. And so the friendships that we have and that we make are important because if I would tell 10 people and those 10 people would tell 100 people, that's much more powerful. So we, try pe we ask people to be our serious friends forever. Uh, if you, after this, you would go to Matthijs, he sits over there, he will all sign you up uh, and he will remember your birthday uh, and send you something nice. Um, but those people are very important to us because we believe in, in this direct relationship. And we believe that if you share the chocolate and you share the story, this is much more effective. Um, so uh, uh, that's my story. I'm all uh, done. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you, Anna. Have a nice evening. And eat more chocolate.